Hi, session five of Egan Matrix Programming. Today we want to talk about shape generators. These are very useful functions that can be defined in the Egan Matrix. There are five of them that can be used and they're very simple to uh, define and, and use. So uh, each one of them is defined by a frequency component that's set up in uh, hertz, cycles per second, and a gating component which basically turns the shape genera generator on if this is greater than zero and when it gets equal to or less than zero the shape generator will turn off. Simple. So let's set up a shape generator and normally uh, the easiest way to do this is in the direct column assign your values. We'll assign a frequency of say uh, 3 hertz, something we can easily hear. Um, and we'll use the W component, which is our simple predefined gate um, that can be uh, used. And typically you'll see these in all the uh, presets defined just like this, um, a value, uh, which can also be another formula, and um, a gate. Now that's only half the story. We've defined the generator that's going to generate this 3 hertz um, component, but that has to be assigned to a formula that's actually going to assign the shape you want to generate. So let's create a user-defined formula A, and you'll notice here, instead of setting A to either a constant or, or a uh, fingerboard gate, one of the other options is to select one of the five shape generators. Well, we've defined shape gener generator 1, so that's the one we'll select. Okay, now this is going to now uh, create my shape. What I'll do is instead of multiplying the whatever the value is times 0, which is not much help to me since that'll be 0, I'll use a unity value which will give me the value that's coming out of the shape generator. So now I can click on my little uh, shape symbol and you can see the options that I have. I can have a ramp up shape a ramp down shape, a pole shape, a triangle shape, a Han shape, which is kind of sign-like, a square uh, wave-like shape, and uh, a sign shape. And I can also assign a shape generator uh, to use the sample and hold of either a full row uh, that I define in the matrix or a sample and hold of another formula. So using one of these two, I can create some pretty uh, complex uh, sounds, uh, sample and hold being it, it, it will take a, a sample at the frequency that we've defined, hold it till the next uh, frequency component uh, triggers in and uh, then take another sample and output that value. We'll have an example of that in a second. So the easiest way to deal with this, to just see what's going on or hear what's going on, is let's, let's use an oscillator and we'll um, use the frequency component of that oscillator will use the um, shape generator to, to, to define my frequency. And we'll output that. We're using oscillator 1, so we'll use our predefined Z formula. And now when I press the fingerboard, I should get something coming out three times a second. And here that I've set to a ramp up. <laughs> And that sounds like I'm ramping up three times a second. I can, if I'm not convinced, I can change that to one and it should ramp slower. Okay, you can see how you might be able to use these as an envelope to trigger some sound coming in. Now, one of the nice things about uh, the, uh, the shape generator is you have the option of either setting it into continuous use or doing it only for a single cycle. Okay, um, as you see, it'll trigger that one cycle. It'll stay on the last note since I haven't lifted my finger. And when I lift my finger, the obviously the shape generator stops. Um, so this is useful, obviously, as an envelope so that I can use this shape to just trigger on the um, initiation of a sound and, and do something afterwards. Or I can set it to a continuous 
uh, function and use it as some kind of repeating uh, pattern. All right. So let's just go through and hear what some of the other ones sound like. Um, I can ramp down. All right, maybe we'll do it twice a second. And pulse wave. Obviously, pulse wave just coming on and off. This is kind of useful if I want to create, you know, machine gun like sounds, or I can, let's say, I can make that uh, 9 plus 9. So now, 18 times a second, I'm going to come on and off like that. Obviously, it's going to sound kind of like just a a machine because the hearing starts picking up frequencies around you know 20 30 hertz depending upon the person so what i could do is um multiply that times 9 again so 18 times 9 would be 162 and that should be the uh the value that's coming out of this right um you can hear that better if I'd set it to a sine wave. Okay, we, to test our theory, what we can do is just set this to 0.162, and it should be the same value coming out. And it is. Remember, we set this frequency component in kilohertz. And so what we're actually sending this is... Um, uh, Okay, let's go back to our two here. So this is basically cycling around two times a second, around one. You know, cyc cycling one down, and down and back again. And if I set this to one kilohertz, we should get a sound that's pretty much the same. And it is. Okay. So our theory kind of holds out here. All right. All very well and good, but that is pretty simple use of the uh, shape generator. Normally a shape generator will be used to uh, modulate something um, or a be added to something. What I could do is set up my normal um, sine tone and I can add say my shape generator to that. That's So two times a second I should get my pitch, but it should be being modulated, or in this case, added to. Okay. And uh, let's try, say, a triangle. All right. Obviously, um, this is attached to the frequency of the fingerboard, so the frequency of my little... Uh, what what sound is going to change depending upon where my finger is. Okay, that's nice. Um, I could do something like um, set this maybe a little faster. I can almost get a, a police car sound out of it that way. Um, I, I, I can use that to modulate uh, in different ways. I can... Um, uh, set this up into uh, as a modulator in and now I'm going to get some really weird kind of <laughs> so uh, obviously uh, shape generators can create some very uh, interesting effects okay I just reset our screen here and what we want to do is wrap up by uh, discussing how to use sample and hold in conjunction with the shape generator. So what we'll do is create another shape generator. In this case, we'll create something where we want to output a random note six times a second. So we'll create our shape, shape generator with uh, a frequency of six. And we'll attach that to a formula. Um, now, uh, shape generator one. And we don't want to use one of the predefined shapes, what we want to use now is a sample and hold. And we'll do it on the whole row. Okay? So we now have a uh, sample and hold. Whatever value I have, I'll multiply it times one, so I'll get that value. And I'll attach that. It doesn't matter where you put it, since I'm not really going to ch channel this to the output. So now I have a uh, sample and hold 
of the noise to find that's going to sample that six times a second. What I want to do is create a second formula. And in this case, I can use it as a constant. I'll basically multiply uh, one times the value of whatever my value coming out of the sample and hold is. So what I'll use is an ancillary function that I'll set up A. So basically, oops, why didn't that take A? A. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is B will actually output six times a second this sample and hold value. So let's attach that to an oscillator so we can hear it. All right, we'll use that as the frequency component of our oscillator. And we will uh, then, I don't know, let's make this maybe a little more, you know, uh, triangle-like sound, maybe, or buzzy at least. And we can set it to an integrated oscillator this time, and it's oscillator 1, so we'll use our um, predefined uh, Z formula. And now, when I press a uh, fingerboard... <laughs> you can hear that I'm generating a random tone that's going to be anywhere in the uh, the range of a, the fingerboard since the, since the noise values are pretty much all over the place. Um, I can set that to a faster value, obviously. Uh, but maybe it's even more useful in conjunction with uh, something I use in a real... Uh, preset to set that to be another formula. Instead of a constant, I can set uh, the frequency to be a formula. Oops. Uh, so we'll set up C. Okay. C will, um, I don't know, let's set C so that it uh, can output up to, say, um, oops. You know, I don't know, something around 60 times a second, all right? So, and we'll attach that to a, a barrel. And so we'll go and create our barrel. Okay. I equals frequency. Done. All right. And now uh, C is set. As I change this, it will go from 0 to our max of 60. All right, set it to something low to begin with. All right. And um, so uh, now, obviously, uh, it's scaled pretty high going 0 to 60. So for me to get a very small value, I've got to go near the beginning. But now I can create patterns that are very fast. Um, obviously, uh, I can create some pretty uh, drastic sounds. Um, and we'll see the presets that um, Ed Egan has created use all these techniques um, in terms of shape generators applied in very creative ways. So that's the basics of shape generators. I don't think you need to know anything more about them right now to bring up predefined patches and figure out what's going on. So, to the next time. <laughs>